learn more about ancient Egypt, culture, and civilization, it is of great importance to discover more about ancient Egypt. And let me tell you something. It is very interesting to learn that when we talk about ancient Egypt, we also need to talk about the first capital of Egypt that was ever founded. Today, we're going back to the first dynasty. And the most important part here is that we need to learn about Memphis. Memphis was the first capital of ancient Egypt after the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. In this place, we feel like walking through history, walking through time, because this is something very, very interesting. If you want to learn more about Egypt, Egypt is a country to discover and to explore. Many different places that you can enjoy here. Let's find out together more about this area and more about something that is really very, very interesting that we are going to move inside now to learn where are we standing today. <laughs> Just think how the maker of this statue was able to sculpture such huge tons of blocks and then at the task of roughly hewing it into shape. What an effort exerted by workers sufficiently numerous, supervised and driven and persistent of course on this grand scale is very clear. The essence of this great statue lies in the many square yards of its carved surface. Ramses II used to be one of the most famous ancient pharaohs. He was keen to build many huge temples and statues to commemorate his reign. He was the third pharaoh of the 19th dynasty. He was one of the most powerful and influential pharaohs of ancient Egypt. He took the throne of Egypt in his early 20s and ruled for 66 years until his death. He was the third ruler of the 19th dynasty and ruled for an amazing 66 years, the second longest reign of the ancient Egyptian pharaohs. <laughs> the best known achievements of Ramses the Great are his architectural endeavors, most notable the Ramesseum and the temples of Abu Simbel. Ramses II's interest in architecture resulted in the erection of more monuments 
than any of the other ancient Egyptian theories. A significant number of architectural tributes attributed to Ramses II still dominate the landscape of Egypt today. This statue, unearthed at Memphis, was thought to have been commissioned by Ramses II himself. It has shown people today how large of an impact Ramses the Great had on the artwork of his day. Other sites have yielded similar large Ramses II statues. The reign of Ramses II was marked by numerous military battles and he became one of the famous Egyptian pharaohs known for his military strength. genius of Ramses II helped to secure Egypt's borders from foreign invaders and pirates along the Mediterranean and in Libya. He managed to fend off invasions from the Hittites and Nubians. Start first with the lady, ladies first, and yeah, I would like to know more about your visit here to Egypt. But first, I want to know also from where do you come? Uh, from the United States as well as the United Kingdom. Okay. First time in Egypt. It is. It is my first time. And you? Uh, I'm from the United States, but I live in the United Kingdom for many years, and I've been in Egypt probably five or six times. Wow! So you know a lot about Egypt. Uh, no, not a lot, but uh, I learn something every time. Uh, but this is the first time that I've really had archaeological guides with us to really explain a lot of what there is to see. So before, I've been primarily here on business, but this is just a personal uh, vacation tour. As he said, he came here five times before. Um, what about you? Tell me, uh, have you been to Egypt before? No, I haven't. I've heard, learned about it at, uh, you know, back in high school and a bit in college and when we studied the ancient civilizations. But... No, I haven't. My parents came about 30 years ago, and they were very impressed by it, so they recommended it. So if I asked you about the places that you would like here, for example, what where are the places that you would like to stop at and places that you would like to visit? Of course, Cairo, uh, Giza, um, Nile, and follow the Nile down, maybe down to uh, Luxor, Valley of the Kings, and then, of course, probably finish off diving in Sharm el-Sheikh. So you told me you came five times before. Just give us a general idea. 
Well, uh, I mean, I think this is one of the most fascinating countries in the world. And uh, you're living in Europe, of course, you're surrounded by European civilization, Roman civilization particularly. But this is uh, so much different. And uh, it's just um, uh, exciting for us to be able to he be here and to learn more about it. And uh, I particularly am interested because I have a had a long involvement with archaeology, uh, not as an archaeologist, but as a involved in, in the UK with a, an association in, uh, of archaeology. So uh, my friends always said, you know, we, you need to spend more time here and really explore, explore this country. So when I was here before, I was in um, Cairo, obviously, and I was in the beautiful museum in Cairo. Uh, we always find, uh, follow King Tut in, a <laughs> in both America and here in Europe, so everybody knows about him. Uh, and you know that all of his belongings will be uh, displayed in the Grand Egyptian Museum. Yes, that's what I heard, and that's the new museum which is being built, I gather. Yes. Well, the old museum was fantastic, but w but too crowded, <laughs> because there's such a rich heritage yes. that you, you they couldn't stop filling it up, and uh, it got to the point where between many tourists and many uh, uh, items, you could hardly move around. So I'm. You will be really impressed with the Grand Egyptian oh, Museum. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But I, I also, Luxor, I enjoyed very much the Valley of Kings. I'm looking forward to going back uh, and having Vanessa have an opportunity to really see, see that. And Karnak, which is spectacular. So um, when I was here, we also I also went down to uh, Aswan in, in the days of Abu Simbel before the they removed the, 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 the statues because of the flooding. So it would be interesting to me for me to go back there now and to see what they've done with it and uh, how it's uh, proceeding forward. We're then going to Sharm el-Sheikh, but that's not, um, uh, you know, that's for diving primarily, not archaeology. But uh, And then back to Cairo again. But we fortunately, we have a couple of weeks to, to do this in, so we're taking our time. Well, Abu Simbel actually is an amazing place. It's my favorite. Whenever I go over there, you will be impressed not only by the place, but by the concept and the idea of moving such a huge temple as it is. Moving, You can move a statue, but moving a temple, this is amazing. Yeah, I'm excited about it. But definitely he talked to you about these places before because he didn't visit any of these places, right? No, I didn't. And so we just arrived about two and a half days ago. So we started out by the main pyramids um, just yesterday, and then today we're doing Memphis, uh, and then we're going to Shakta. Is that, that how you Jakara. pronounce it? Jakara? Yeah. Jakara. Jakara, excuse me. Yeah, my, my pronunciation isn't the best. Um, and then tomorrow, what are we Back doing to tomorrow? Cairo. No. Are we, we are, yeah, we are in Cairo. Cairo. No, this sorry, is all Cairo. In, in, the, to the s in the city of Cairo, so the more central. And then we're, we're on Monday, we then go to Luxor. So, so get ready for Luxor. Yes. <laughs> Did you read about it? A little bit, yeah, but not too much. I want to leave up to a little bit to uh, surprise. So our tour guide will tell you more about it. I so I was to say, I, the last time I went to Luxor, I took the train down there, <laughs> which was an uh, interesting <laughs> experience. Uh, I'm glad I'm flying this time. <laughs> it was rather crowded and it was a long trip. But, but you will enjoy also the Nile cruise. The Nile yeah. cruise is amazing. Yeah, that's fascinating. I mean, just uh, any way you go, whether it's by train or whether it's with a boat, just having a chance to go slowly along the Nile is an amazing experience because you see everybody out, uh, you know, doing their washing, doing their cooking, gathering their vegetables and whatnot. It's so spectacular fishing. It is a great experience. Yeah. So did you learn anything about Ramses II, for example, on such a great statue? We learned a lot. I mean, we learned a lot about how many children he had. <laughs> and the, and, and all of the people are impressed by this. I'm impressed. And I think he's the, the 19th pharaoh of a dynasty of 30 pharaohs. And so it's quite impressive, over 3,000 years. And, and like, yeah, I mean, just, and how big he is. I mean, 22 meters and the false beard and that the, the false beard means that he was royalty. But when the false beard goes up, it means that he is a deity. So it's, it's all impressive. And just how to read the cartouche with his name and what it means and how they get a different name when they become a pharaoh, etc. So you got uh, some good information. I did. You have a good tour guide. Yes, and I've been yeah, absorbing it all. Tour guide. Fortunately, we have a very good tour guide. The question is how much of this we'll all remember. So we'll have to buy a few books along the way as well recommend getting a tour guide. I just think it's great. You get that personal experience, you get a personal feel. and uh, they well Even with a group that has a tour good tour guide. I mean, I don't think you can discover Egypt without a guide. You know, it's no, uh, too much information. Even no matter how much you read before. <laughs> you know, 
let me ask you about uh, when, you, when you came to Egypt. Of course, um, Egypt is not only places, but I'm talking about services provided. I'm talking about people, about the culture. Um, how do you feel about it? Uh, did you like it? Uh, did you feel comfortable with it? Absolutely. No, everybody's been very kind, very polite. I feel very safe. I think that's important. The food has been excellent. The did you like the Egyptian food? I do. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. always been big on it. We liked that before we got here, yeah, actually. Exactly. So. Yeah, and that's so a platter. Uh, wonderful Egyptian foods and medjas that we're used to and so forth. So good quality, good yeah. quality yeah. for sure. Yeah. Excellent service. I mean, it really, the hotels that we've stayed at here, a couple of hotels have been really very, very good. People very responsive and helpful to us everywhere. So, And it's been a pleasure, actually, to be here when it wasn't so overwhelmed by tourists. Uh, but I can imagine, you know, during the high season, uh, how different it made. It really high season when, not that this isn't high season, I guess, but when there's a larger tourist group. What I would say is this is a great time to be here. So if you're thinking about coming as a tourist, now is the time to be here. Yeah, but actually, I mean, they have taken great, uh, considering the COVID pandemic, they have taken great precautions. Uh, everybody's being protected. Everybody's wearing masks for the most part. Well, I mean, all we of us have. Here. Yes, we all have it, but it's just yeah, to yeah, 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 but this is different. And then, you know, where sanitizers, uh, the tests. Very well done. Yeah, people keeping distance, etc. It's been great. Really safe. I would say, I would say more so than where we've just come from, which is the United Kingdom, where people are not abiding by the rules of, uh, you know, separation and masking and so forth. And as a result, they have a lot of problems today. Yeah. So if you want to get away from the problems in the United Kingdom, come to Egypt. <laughs> So what is your final message? Each one of you tell me a final message to the camera and to our viewers and to your people, of course. Sure. My final message would be, I think Egypt is definitely something that should be on everybody's bucket list because of the culture, the food, the people, the landscape. I mean, it's just, and if one is a scuba diver, what I am, I think that's something definitely look forward to. Are you going to go for scuba diving this time? I will, yeah. I'm finishing off the last two days. I'll be diving the Red Sea, which is great. I've dived all around the world. So this is my first time in the Red Sea, though. So, But let me tell you that this time it will be completely different from all over the world. Hey, and I'm okay with that. I welcome that. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I can hardly add more. I mean, it's just a spectacular country. Uh, the fact is I've been back here a number of times, and I would come back again because you can never take it all in. So it's, it, it is a unique country, uh, and I would recommend that everybody come here at least once, maybe twice or three times in their life. Not enough. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's truly a pleasure to be here and to talk about this wonderful country. <laughs>
There are also remains of granite statues of Ramses II and granite coffins and commemorative tablets from later periods. Taking a general look all around the area, it is Memphis that was founded around 3100 BC. The legendary city of Minas, the king who united Upper and Lower Egypt. And that is what remains for today, just as a memorial place for such a great history. But there is little left of the city today, at least that can be seen. Originally, the city had many fine temples, palaces and gardens, but today, other than the scattered ruins, most of the city is gone or lies beneath cultivated fields. Now certain local villages. What we do know of Memphis comes to us from its necropolises mentioned above text and papyrus from other parts of Egypt and also Herodotus who visited the city. The fraction we can see of Memphis today is located principally around the small village of Mitwahina, and we believe that Ptah was the principal pagan god worshipped in Memphis. The remains of the gods templing bordering the village of Mitrahina was at one time probably one of the grandest temples in Egypt. Today, only a fraction of the temple remains, which was originally excavated by the famous Egyptologist W. M. Flinders Petrie between 1908 and 1913. Ramses II is well represented here with the colossus of himself near the alabaster sphinx along the southern enclosure wall. Other remains include an enclosure with a ruined palace of Epirus to the north of the temple of Ptah. That was all for our backpack for today. Thank you all for joining us. Remember, next week we will be back to bring you all about Egypt and all about the beautiful sites where you can enjoy your vacation. Till then, thank you for joining us and see you again next week, same time and more on Backpack.